Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the next episode in my series on the lore of the Witcher world. Today we're going to be looking at the insectoids which are basically monsters with insect-like appearances and are also insect-like in nature and their society and in terms of how they work overall. There is a lot to cover in this video and I'm going to group each of them up so it's easier to sort of um, understand them and sort of look through their subspecies and I'll work in the order from top to bottom which I'll explain a bit later on. On top of which many of them share very similar weaknesses and behaviours so it just helps to make everything a little bit less complicated and gives you a more comprehensive video overall instead of just sort of talking about each and every one and explaining each and every weakness despite there being maybe one little different so it, it kind of makes more sense to do something along these lines. So today we'll be covering the Arakasi family, which I hope I'm pronouncing right, the Arachnomorphs, the Endrigo family, the Kikimor family and the giant centipedes. God save us all. From the far south, these creatures crawled, venturing into the Northlands, migrating from their warmer home over the course of many decades, slowly adjusting to their new and colder surroundings. They found damp woodlands and swamps in which they make their nests, using moss and undergrowth as blankets for winter during the hibernation. Being a very strange creature to see wandering the forests, they are also very feared, but have a weak point, an unprotected sack-like abdomen which they often hide under a covering of hollow tree trunks worn down their backs. Although despite that weak point, they have ample protection by using their powerful pincers, their maws filled with razor-sharp, lacerating teeth, and venom glands stacked with the deadliest of toxins, which are incredibly dangerous and since many of the Arakasi stay still among the forest undergrowth, they can blend into the forest and use it to a deadly advantage, spitting venom, grabbing prey with their antenna, and then crushing down with their pincers. All of which seems very overblown considering their prey make up mostly of farm animals and locals who are likely to put up little of a fight. However, it does mean, especially in Velen, that contracts on such creatures as the Arakase can mean a substantial reward for any swordsman or witcher looking for good coin. The Arakasi have three classes inside of their family, all of which are highly venomous and share similar weak points and strength, which I'll get to in a second. Firstly, there is the Armoured Arakase, or Arakasi, it's either one of the two. But uh, the Armoured uh, Arakase, the Armoured Arakase, <laughs> which yeah, I think it'd be much better if this was all done in an Australian accent, like it'd be like, Firstly, there is the Armoured Arakase with its uh, massive hulking creature, which <laughs> is... Firstly, there is the Armored Arakase, which is a massive hulking creature that uses its mass to knock over and then trample its victims. It is known as being armored because, as I mentioned earlier, they wear tree stumps to protect themselves and their weak points, and some other variations even grow a thick covering that shelter their most squishy parts. And that could be taken out of context. Of course, every Arakase is highly venomous, however, this class produces in very large quantities a particular and potent deadly toxin. A few drops are more than enough to kill a man, and a great amount will be sufficient to kill even a witcher, their mutations only helping to prolong a painful, agonizing death. Their toxins are coated all over their bodies in pincers before combat, meaning that avoiding contact with the substance is very, very difficult. It is also worthwhile to stock up on healing potions and crossbow bolts before setting out, golden oil and insectoid oils being very important to use before and during a fight with any Arakase. They all hit very hard and their attacks are laced with toxins, some using with sticky-like webs to bind their victims in place if too far away, allowing them to charge forward and attack. Never take them head on, always stay on the sides and flank, with quick strikes to the sides especially to the armoured variant. Igni is useful to set them on fire momentarily and leave them open to a heavy attack. Quinn will help dull damage. Yarden will slow them down, letting you flank, and Axie can pacify them long enough to flank as well. The Armored Arrakis and Venomous Arrakis can be fought using the same strategies and tactics as a regular Arrakis, the only difference being the former taking more hits to go down, with the latter's venom making Golden Oriole a necessity for neutralizing the potent poison.
scurrying deep in damp caves, sometimes in isolated swamps and even in forests, can be found the acromorphs, otherwise known as monster spiders, being large insectoid creatures resembling a common spider. Go figure. They are of course very dangerous and very fast, outrunning and hunting down any who venture too close. There is not much known about them as they are a rarer variety of monster, and among their family there is one such variant known as the Arachnomorph Colossi, which sounds bloody epic, which have been said can devour an entire ox in seconds. These creatures are post-conjunction beings, meaning they appeared after the event and their origins are unknown, which makes them spookier than a spider can be spooky. What is wrong with me? These monsters are considered to be so dangerous that even witches have a hard time killing them or even capable of doing so, the Colossi being an even worse opponent to face. Being giant spiders, they spit webs which will hold you in place as they will quickly attack you then scurry away before you can try to counter them. Being quick and clean with your dodges and attacks is very important, making sure you don't get slowed down by them is also vital. As for signs, Yarden is especially useful, slowing down and hurting arachnomorphs, Igni can set them alight, and Axionard can help disable them. Insectoid oils are also important, and if started at a very close range, the whirl attack can usually keep smaller arachnomorphs off balance enough to keep them in range until dead. However, the bigger variety will usually be able to jump out of range and use a counterattack because they are clever buggers who won't die. The Andrega are similar to Arakasi and are drawn to flooded plains and other areas where there is a lot of moisture and ideally tall grasses. These monsters hatch from eggs which lay inside of cocoons and are often hanging from trees and underground caves depending on the type of insectoid. As from their history and where they come from, it's a little bit uh, confusing but there was some talk about them being experiments and some of them are just naturally um, mutated into these insects in, in this way because they've been around for a very long time and over time they have just become bigger and bigger which I will explain in a second because that is a giant part of their way of evolving. So as, as well as that, they have three different classes inside of their family, from drone, worker, warrior, and the queens, but she counts more as a separate entity in my opinion, and is a very rare occurrence, so I won't be going over her weaknesses as she basically shares the exact same ones as her children. Her Indrega children. The drones and their entire existence is there so that they may protect their nests and fertilize their queen, which normally comes to pass in the autumn. And the way they work is pretty interesting as the weaker drones die in battle, leaving only the largest and strongest alive, meaning that the genes from those creatures are passed down to the next generation, leading to having this constant system of improvement and adaption that will slowly work its way up to these creatures being more and more powerful and bigger. And it's also interesting because for this species' very survival, they rely on the deaths of those weaker, allowing only the strongest to survive, and after they fertilize the queen, their bodies feed the hive during winter months. Workers are the most numerous and thus the most frequently encountered class of Andrega. Within the colony, their duty lies in building nests and cocoons, acquiring food and caring for eggs and larva. When threatened, they will summon warriors to aid them, but if they need to defend themselves, they will do so with surprising force. They often travel in numbers of half a dozen or so, commonly moving slower, however when under attack they are capable of covering distance very very quickly. They attack fast and their bite is highly venomous and toxic, leaving deep wounds festering. Wave upon wave of Andrega workers are enough to overcome most attackers, but when confronting more dangerous foes, Andrega colonies unleash their largest, strongest members, the warriors. This class are purebred fighters living only to fight, defending the colony's borders and conquering new territory. The Andrega drones can shoot poison quills at distant targets from their abdomens or attack with their pincers. Once they get close, they try to stay close. If multiple drones are present, northern wind bombs can halt two or three of the beasts, giving witches a moment to regain control of the situation, and Yarden is also helpful. As you can imagine, Andregas are hard to penetrate in terms of having very thick armor that which takes more than several good swings to actually even crack. 
The Andrega workers can vomit acid uh, to great effect from a distance of several paces and their usual tactic is to surround their enemy and attack them from several sides at once. Like all insectoids, they do not suffer from bleeding, yet take massive damage from insectoid oils. And as for the Andrega warrior, they are massive monsters with a long tail which is tipped with a club-like growth and spiked with venomous barbs. Powerful abdominal muscles allow it to swing the massive tail with enough force to kill most creatures and men in a single death-dealing blow. They also use their massive strength to their advantage, charging at their opponents in an attempt to knock them over to the ground. From the very way insectoids are built, and from their anatomy that is sectioned off into piece by piece, a warrior is rarely affected by bleeding, yet it will deal massive damage by a blade coated in insectoid oils, just as all the rest of the Indrega. And by far the most effective tactic against them is to use Axie, stunning them with the sign and getting several hits in, then backing away and keeping out of range until your stamina recovers, and then repeating. The Kikimor have only two classes, that of a warrior and worker. The workers help to build and form colonies similar to those of ants that are ruled by a queen and organized into something of a social hierarchy. Kikimor workers take care of hunting food and bringing it back to the nest, while Kikimor warriors defend the nest against attackers. How these monsters communicate is unknown, as is the way of many others. However, there are theories that the Kikimor have a highly developed sense of smell and use the airborne particles to transmit information. This theory has yet to be proved or disproved. A Kikimor worker on its own can be easily killed by even a weak person or even a child. It is very rare, however, to come across one that is isolated, as Kikimor workers usually move in groups of a few dozen, as their only defense is to swarm onto attackers. They will listen to orders given by Kikimor warriors, and on command, a group of workers can begin burrowing tunnels near potential prey to allow for a surprise attack. However, eliminating the warrior in question will cause the workers to disperse and cease digging. As Kikimo warriors are the defenders, they are somewhat slower than workers, but are able to spew streams of caustic venom at a great distance. This venom is highly unique, reacting with the witch's body to raise the level of his potion's toxic effects, meaning that a witcher especially is in a lot of danger if touched by the venom. Warriors are covered with thick, hard shell-like armor, which can easily deflect blows from even a witcher blade. Both worker and warrior are immune to the effects of the Axie sign, but are vulnerable to Igni, oils, and bombs harming insectoids and blows dealt by a silver sword. Kikimor groups tend to consist out of several workers and one warrior. The warrior is much larger, deadlier, and eliminating him first is one of the better tactics as it leaves workers vulnerable and easier to finish. And finally, these massive insect-like monsters can be found in many places over the world, but are more commonly located in and under the lands of Toussaint. They are often found dwelling close to Shemales, I think is how you pronounce it, but I, I, I cannot be certain. And these two classes have a strange monstrous relationship, which has developed between the two of them, as giant centipedes feed on the small creatures that eat the Shalmar dung. Hard, chitinous armor covers nearly the entire body of a giant centipede, and from under this covering run rows of hooked, sharp limbs. These monsters can burrow into the ground with incredible and dangerous speed, only to appear again back into the daylight closer or further from their foe. They will circle their enemies determinedly, snaking closer and closer until able to deliver a blow. They attack primarily with their powerful jaws, but they also possess glands allowing them to spew horrid acid. They can parry the strikes of many blades, then quickly counter-attack with their own forceful blows, meaning the best method for fighting them is to catch them in a yard and trap, keeping them still and held as they try to burrow back into the ground, and leaving them unbelievably vulnerable to any attack from a weapon. There is also a variation of this class known as a Pale Widow, which in all respects is a much more dangerous and faster version of a giant centipede and much, much rarer to encounter. So that's about it for insectoids. Um, there were a few other classes and there was a one called a sand crab and there were a few more special ones, but 
I felt like the sand crowds, for instance, aren't really needed to talk about because they are only encountered in one area in the game, and the others are sort of the ones like the Queen and some of the special some of the special ones are more like uh, boss battles in that respect. So I figured it'd be a better idea not to talk about them um, simply because this video is already very long and it isn't really interesting enough to make a difference. But they are the other two that exist, Sand Crabs and a few of the other um, aforementioned bosses. But as for the fact that I have not made a video for a very long time, I am incredibly sorry about that. Again, I am trying to um, get these out at a, at a pace which is, you know, not going to make my channel die, but it, it's, it's a bit difficult. Um, but I've been very busy with other work and I'm just trying to get... Um, I guess a good uh, footing in terms of what I want to do and how I want to, or what, where I want to focus my efforts in that respect. But um, I'm making these videos still, and I'm trying to make them. Like I said, uh, you know, I'm trying to make them better and better and better each time, and I want to keep improving that. And at the moment, my hardware. Um, is let, let's just say it's not really up to the task of rendering um, proper videos and actually recording inside of The Witcher 3. I'm like running a GTX 670 in my computer, it's fucking horrible. But uh, we're getting there, it just means it's a lot slower, so... But otherwise, thank you, and I mean you, thank you very much for watching, especially if you're still here at the very end, and I will see you in the next one, there will be more videos coming out very soon, and... Until the next time guys, you all have a good day, and I feel fan-fucking-tastic.